Hey guys, I'm back with my SummerSlam review series, and today I'm reviewing SummerSlam 96. And you could see from, you know, like I said in the last uh, review, SummerSlam 95, that that was totally garbage and the drizzling shits of the WWF. You know, it was just bad. 93, like I said, 94, 93, like 93 to 95 was a bad period for the WWF. I'm not saying 96 was a good year for them at all. Because they were getting their ass whooped, ass whooped by WCW. This was the start of the Monday Night Wars. Um, because obviously, like a month before that, they had um, the NWO. Just We had the biggest heel side in pro wrestling here with Hulk Hogan. So, it was mad. And uh, the WWF were really struggling with, like, you know, big star names. But I, actually, they were kind of building their own names. They had Stone Cold Steve Austin, who was getting into his own at this time. And you had... Um, you had, you know, Psycho Sid, you had Mankind, you had The Undertaker, who was kind of established in the New Generation era, but really got established here, in my opinion. And then you had Shawn Michaels, who was obviously getting established as well as the main event guy, so I thought that was pretty good. Uh, so we open up SummerSlam 1996 with Owen Hart versus Sylvia. Salvea so, uh, Vegas. I thought that this was a good match here. I didn't think that this was a bad opener for some some ninety six. It did its job to get the crowd warmed up and into the match. Uh, Owen Hart gets the win because apparently Owen Hart was I think injured at the time or selling an injury, I don't know which one it was. And um he took his um wrist pad is like um his like what did they call that? Or your bandage, what did he call that? Your wrist thing? I don't know. The thing when you when you break your arm, your cast thing. He knocks that over the head of Savannah Vegas and gets the win. Then we had a tag team title match. Um, I think this was a yeah. We had a fatal four way elimination style tag team match for the WWF tag team titles. It was the Smoking Guns defending the tag titles against the uh the Barney Adanas and the Goodwins and the Rockers, which was Marty Jannetty. Uh, well, the new Rockers. Because the Rockers, obviously, Shawn Michaels left the Rockers in 92. So this was Marty Jannetty trying to revamp the Rockers with somebody else. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, Marty Jannetty in WWF was a hit and miss, in my opinion. Like, you know, he had his problems, so they wouldn't keep him around so much. Like, you would see him and now and again in tag matches, and then they would release him. So, <clears throat> and that's not the WWF's fault. That's Marty's fault because he was, because he had his problems, so. A shame there that they, they didn't really push Marty as a, a mid card guy as they should have done. I thought they should have done a bit more with the guy, but his demons and stuff. So, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to ramble on here about that too much. But I thought this was another good match here. I mean, it really set the tone off for the night. I mean, we had Owen Hart versus Owen Hart and Surveyor Vegas open up the show. Done this good tag match here. Um, the first team to get eliminated was the... Um, was the Rockers? They went first, and then it then it was down to the then it was the Body Donners, and then it was the Goodwins versus the Smoking Guns, and um, they the Smoking Guns retained the titles, and after that, Sonny cuts a promo saying that all you men out there wish that you had a girlfriend like Sonny, and my God, Sonny was hot in '96. Just wait a minute, I gotta take a moment. Wow, yeah. Well, wow. aha, Sonny was in 1996, Sonny. Mad. Anyway, where was I? Anyway, let's get back to this review. Um, we had Psycho Sid defeat the British Bulldog. Um, I thought this was for the IC title. Apparently, it wasn't. I don't know what, what I thought that was. But anyway, I thought it was a solid match. Moving on to the next match. Uh, Goldust, uh, Goldust defeats Mark Merrill. Um, and that was that. It was a whatever match. Then we had Jerry Lawler versus Jake the Snake Roberts. Now, I, I really, I did like this storyline. Um, they played off Jake's demons, that always an alcoholic and stuff. So we know he didn't recover as an alcoholic. They said he did in Storm, but we also, he didn't until many years later. Luckily enough, he did. But I'm glad that they, he's actually been saved. But like I said, they played up his alcoholism and stuff in the match and to get some kind of realism into storylines now. I thought that was a good touch there. Maybe the alcoholism was a bit much, I don't know. But like I said, I thought I thought it was good. The match was like a flop. It wasn't like whatever. Um, Jay Lawler gets the win because he like hits a um, bottle into uh, Jake's throat. Oh my god, that was a nasty ass bump. But uh, like I said, ugh, horrible. And then after that, um, Mark Henry, who was debuting at SummerSlam this year, which was his first SummerSlam, 
um, he comes out, well, he was like on, on commentary, and he just basically um, ch chases J um, Jerry Lawler away and helps Jake to get back. So, yeah, good debut for Mark Henry. And then after that, we have Mankind versus The Undertaker, my favorite match on this pay-per-view, and it was in a, ball in a boiler room brawl. Now, I was thinking, when I was watching this, I was thinking, like, <clears throat> when was the last ball, um, boiler room brawl match we ever had? Like, I know we had one in the Ed Tadana. We had a shitload in the Ed Tadana. But when, when was the last one we had in recent years? I cannot remember the last one we had. And I was thinking that, that the, the times of the years that we've had so many steel cage matches, so many Hell in a Cell matches, so many of these, oh, like, like other gimmick matches like TLC all the time we always have had on the cell of steel cage matches but we never have a boiler room brawl I don't know why they never consider that I mean all it is is two guys fighting in a fucking boiler room for about 10 minutes and then they, they would go to maybe the locker room and brawl there for a bit and maybe into the arena it's basically a false cut anywhere match but they start in a boiler room what why do they not add that in current WWE time could they not put that like can somebody not have a feud in a boiler room brawl like, I don't know a Bray Wyatt Finn Balor could at SummerSlam or they could have done it with the Drifter and Finn Balor <coughs> I don't know why they didn't I don't know why they don't bring back the boiler room stipulation like I really enjoyed that match it was so fucking awesome like they were brawling um in the locker room they were brawling outside a man came through coffee on the Undertaker you know, shit like that, and then they were brawling into the ring, and then um, Paul Bearer, who uh, turned on Undertaker and obviously helped Mankind to the win and get the urn, and Mankind won the match. It was fucking awesome, though. I enjoyed that. Um, then after that, we had our main event, Shawn Michaels defending the WWF title against Vader. I thought that this, that this was a good match, like I said. Um, I thought this was the second match. Second best match of the night wasn't like my favorite, but it was it's got to be second because first was also that book boil room bro I really enjoyed that and then they kind of I don't know if they should have done this though but they, they went for the main event after the boil room brawl now I think a lot of people were still like excited from that match so they had to I don't know like the crowd I don't think were too into it because they were still recovering from that awesome boil room brawl match they just seen a few minutes beforehand uh but yeah I mean Vader and Shawn Michaels should have found a good match and we all know the story that Vader didn't get didn't get the title because Sean, and you know, we all know that um, Sean was obviously a big politician backstage, um, you know, and he wouldn't put over certain guys, and obviously this was a guy he didn't put over, so, you know, um, Shawn Michaels and Vader, I thought they had a good match, I know that obviously Vader was stiff in the ring, but I thought he was, you know, I'm yeah, um, Sean got a good match out of him, and uh, yeah, um, well, they actually finished the match with a, uh, a disqualification, actually, with Shawn Michaels actually getting counted out, and Vader gets the win. But Jim Cornette comes on to me and says, I'm not going to have this. We came for a title shot. And whatever. And then, um, obviously, the match restarts. And then Shawn Michaels attacks Jim Cornette with a fucking bat. And then I think he super kicks Vader, gets the win, and he retains the WWF title. And like I said, it was an awesome match. I couldn't really fault it, really, to be honest with you. But I just think the timing issue was kind of a bit bad, in my opinion. I think they maybe should have maybe put the J, maybe put Taker on. Taker versus Mankind on before the Jake and Jerry Lawler match and then they could have done Sean and Vader last. They could have like spaced it out a bit more in the match types. I think if you take like Jerry Lawler and Jake in between the Undertaker and Mankind match and, and the Shawn Michaels Vader match then I think that would be fitting like if you put them like near to the end so it's just like a filler match but we get to the main event. I don't know. That's what I would have done personally, but yeah, like I said, that was my SummerSlam 1996 review. What do you guys think of SummerSlam 96? Uh, leave your thoughts down below, guys, and I'll check you later.